Today we're going to work on doing a European mount of a bighorn steer bull. First thing we have to do is we will skin the hide off just like we skin any other animal. She wants the bottom jaw saved so we'll skin that down the same way. We'll cut the, all the hair, ears, everything will be removed, leave the horns. And that's first step, just skin it just like we would any other animal. We don't have to be careful because we're not going to use the hide. That's just going to be discarded. At this time, we've got the complete hide removed just like we would for a head mount. That's not going to be used, so we're going to discard that. Now, this is a 10 year old bull. We have to remove the bottom jaw before boiling. That's on this animal that could be tough so it looks like I'm struggling it's probably because I am. One of our first cuts we're going to make is we're going to go right from the back corner of the mouth aim towards the back of the jaw. Be careful never to cross an arm over a knife. I learned that lesson the hard way and had 10 stitches to prove for it. There we go. That's going to be cut loose. We will go from the back of the jaw to the corner of the mouth on this side. This is a tough old animal. He's getting hard. This jaw is going to come off hard. I'm going to take it. We're going to remove the tongue at this time, going right inside the jaw, cutting right next to the jaw very carefully. Every once in a while, a locker plant will have this done for you because the customer wants the tongue. I like them guys. These big, these old animals are the toughest ones to get ready to boil. I would rather boil a four to five year old than any other animal. The skull is tough enough that you can, don't have to worry about it falling apart during the boiling process. And yet it's not so old that everything's really tough. There's a bone in here, I'm just gonna snip it off where the tongue's attached. One on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. Now we can get rid of the tongue. At that point, we've got an open bottom jaw. We're going to very carefully Go right down along the jaw, up into the skull with a good sharp knife. We're just going to keep cutting that meat down in there until this bottom jaw breaks loose. Done right, it sh I should be able to pop it right out eventually. Same with the outside. We're just going to start cutting that meat away until we get to the point to where that jaw will come loose. I have used crowbars and pry bars and not saying we ain't going to yet on this one, but it seems to be breaking loose for me. Now if I was a strong 
strong 20 year old, I just take and pop that thing right off there. It's a knot, I just cut it off a little farther than normal. Once it breaks over like that, our part's done. As I said, she wants that boiled at the same time, so we're going to clean that up for her today, too. At this point, I got a little bit of extra meat I'm going to trim off. I don't trim a lot of meat off at this point. I let the boiling water do the job for me. I've seen people that spend hours trimming this meat, and I don't think they gain a lot. At that point, you can also see that I want a real neat cut along the horns. I didn't leave a bunch of hair because the more hair and the gristle you leave along the horn, the harder it is going to be to remove this horn. At this point, we're going to move this skull to the boiling pot. We're going to proceed to boil these horns off. Here you can see I specifically built a boiling pot for the skulls that we're going to do. This has been made for bigger animals such as buffalo, cows, anything that's got horns on it so it sits down in there. The dimensions of this pot will be listed on the website if you want to make your own. I had a lid for it. Uh, I've since lost it. I never used it anyway. I've got two burners underneath it, 90,000 BTU burners. Just turkey boiling burners is all they are connected to propane. This skull is too big to drop both sets of horns in at one time, so we're going to have to boil one side off at a time. We're going to make sure one side is completely submerged without getting the front teeth down in because I don't like the teeth in the water any longer than they have to be so I boil the horns off in the back of the skull while leaving the teeth and the front nose pieces off. If you drop them down at this time you're going to have a problem with them falling out on you later. I'm also going to throw a set of Ibex horns in at this time got to get those apart for mounting. Looks like I'm only going to get one side down in at a time. Put the skull in there, so we're going to put one side of the Ibex in. There's also a mountain goat down in there at this time. They should be boiled at this time. You do not add any washing soda to the water. <clears throat> it will discolor these horns. You do not want to discolor the horns after the horns are removed. Then we'll add our washing soda at a later time and that'll help remove and gel the meat. At this time we boiled this skull, this horn, for about an hour and a half. We're going to test it and see if this cap will pop off. We're going to go right between the gristle along the horn and the horn sheath itself. Try to work the screwdriver into there. Yep, we boiled her just long enough and popped right off. We're going to proceed to boil the other side off at this time. We're going to dig our other two heads out of here first, put that one back in. As I said, there's a mountain goat down here somewhere. the other horn in. We'll give that about an hour and a half. A little luck, that one will come off just as easy as this one did. At this time we've gotten removed both horn caps due to the fact that the skull still would not fit down in my pot. I cut off the tips of the core of the bone. I left about eight inches of core on both sides for putting my horns back on. I'm going to put the skull in the water. I'm going to leave the 
try to get it down to where the where the eyeballs are just in the water but the rest of it's not. I'm going to use a piece of rod that I had laying around. I'm going to lay it across my pot. I'm just going to rest the teeth to it. That way I've got my eyes down in the water. I'll be boiling from the back forward. I use a product called Arm & Hammer Washing Soda. I like to use a little over two ounces per gallon. This thing holds about 17 gallons, so I'm going to pour out a little bit. Probably about two-thirds of this box will make up. What this product does is it'll help gel the meat up and make it removed from the bone a whole lot easier. We're going to put the rest of the skulls in there that we have that we got to clean up today. Right now that's probably going to boil an hour, hour and a half before I pull it back out and start trimming the meat away. We're going to let it cook good and just like making a soup. Now for the messy part of the European mount. This is going to be the initial cleaning of the skull. I find an old knife, keep it as sharp as possible. You can see how the water and the <clears throat> washing soda has made this meat gel up. We're going to trim, we're just going to start trimming all this excess meat off. Everything that we can trim off at this point. I've got a hose with hot water handy. I like to use hot water cleaning these up. If you can find a spot to do it outside, better yet, I've got a big sink in my shop because most of them I do is in the winter. During hunting season, I do, oh, anywhere probably from 150 to 200 European mounts a year. But this, this animal being as old as it was, he's a little tough. I'm going to run some cold water over this. I can't hang on to it right now. It's hot yet. But I don't want to cool it completely down because that will take all the gel out of my... I'm just going to cool down where I want to be able to hold on to it. But we're going to spend time, we're going to get as much off the back of this head at this time as we can. So that the next time it comes out, it will clean up more yet. It usually takes on one this old, I'll pull it out of the water three or four different times, bring it in here, work a little more of this meat off every time. Find yourself a big screwdriver with a solid shank and a solid handle. You're going to need that in this step. As I said, we're going to keep trimming away. There's a couple very important things to do in this first initial step. Pieces that have to come off in order to make this skull boil faster and be able to finish it and hopefully an eight to 10 hour day. Right in here, in front of the, um, where the spine attaches in the back of the skull, there's a spot to take screwdriver down in, you're actually taking the ear butts out. What this is doing is opening it up to the inside of the skull now. I seen earlier this skull was shot in the forehead, so this is going to make a little bit of a mess for us. Hopefully the skull is still okay when we get to it. There's the chunk of ear bone I just cut out of that side. I'm working this side out now. 
as I said, there's some important steps this time you want to get. Get as much of this eyeball out as you can. At this time, use your knife to cut around it. Be very careful, don't cut towards yourself. Always be cutting away. Last thing you want is to stick yourself in the stomach with a knife. Sometimes hook the screwdriver down in back here and pull the eyeball out that way. We may have to boil a little longer to get that eye out the way it looks. It's not wanting to move on us yet. I like to remove it at this time if at all possible. Kind of keep your mouth shut while you're doing it. They have a tendency of exploding from time to time and they don't taste very well. This is a tedious, stinky, dirty job right here. As I said, this is an old animal. He's really tough. If this was a two and a half year old animal, them eyes would have popped right out already. This skull would pretty much be clean by now if it was a two and a half year old animal. Got a pair of forceps. I just use them to grab stuff, pull it off. As you can see, I see it very important to cut as much meat loose at this point as possible. It's gonna make the rest of the day go a lot easier. As that water can move in between the meat and the skull, It'll gel it up and take it off that much faster. I'm going to scoop the excess meat stuff out of the sink before I run the water through. Oh, this stuff will just plug up your drain. I always keep the bucket or garbage handy. This is where I use the hot water. Work it right into that brain cavity. The water will wash, push the brain right out from the brain hole. Do this the first time out. It'll let that water get up in there. It'll be heating water from the inside of the skull and the outside at the same time. It'll get the job done twice as fast for you. If you forget this step, It'll take you longer to do your skull. As I said, I do between 150 and 200 a year. I like to be fishing at them. <coughs> Actual hands on in this skull, I will, from start to finish, if it was a normal skull and everything went good, you'd have two hours of hands on. On a stall this size. At this point, I think it needs some more boiling before I can get much of that off. 
I run my knife where I can, cut parts so it'll pull away easier. Bust it out what I could. Just wish I could remove this other eye at this time, but it's not cooperating very well. As I said, it was in the water after we removed the horns about an hour and a half before I brought it in here. Looks like another 45 minutes to an hour. I'll, I'm going to put it back in the water. 45 minutes to an hour, I'll bring her back out. We're also going to clean it this time. We're going to clean all the excess meat off the bottom jaw as she wanted that cleaned up and saved. As you can see, we only went this far into the water. That'll be cleaned up and put back in the water to finish too at this time. This is the second time we've had this skull out of the water. As you can see this time the eye completely came off. You can see where it's, how far it's been in the water to this point. We haven't done anything with the bottom nose piece and that yet. We're gonna we're gonna drop it one more time. The same as we have for probably another half hour, 45 minutes. Then we'll run through it one more time at that point. And then I think you'll be ready to drop the rest of the way and by 4.30, 5 o'clock, it should be clean. Right now we're washing some more brains out of it. Picking out anything we can at this point. The more we get picked out, the cleaner it gets, the faster it gets done. I know it seems like work, but if you just let it boil off, it'll boil apart and this skull will eventually fall apart and deteriorate. So you have to do a little bit of the cleaning by knife and hand, and scraping. Work in these heavy spots. Learn where the heaviest spots are. They're the first things you work every time. The gristle is the hardest part to get off. The meat comes off easy. The older the animal, the more gristle you have. But at this point, we're just going to work it. Clean it up the best we can, pulling all the cling-ons off. persuasion. back in the water at this point for another half hour or so we've got the brains out all the inside stuff we can get out and another half hour 45 minutes on the back side then we'll drop her the rest of the way okay this time we put the skull back in we left it just on the back half for the first half hour then we dropped the nose piece down in the water completely for 45 minutes now we're going to take it out 
We're going to work as much more of this off as we can. Hopefully we can remove the nostrils when we get down there. You have to be careful at this time that the teeth are staying in place. Take a knife. We're going to try to cut through that bottom gristle on the jaw. Teeth are starting to loosen up, so next time in the water we have to be really careful when we take it out. If the teeth are gone, we have to locate it in the water when we dump it. Inside of that nostril with one pull. Flyers. See if I can get a hold of that and pull it out of there. You want to leave the nostril cavities in there. We're just trying to remove that septum out of the center of it at this point. trim off what's left here the best we can. At this point we're going to have about another half hour, 45 minutes of boiling left to clean the last of the Klingons off. Pull it out of the water after a half hour, make sure. See what it looks like. If we have to, we'll drop her back in again. <clears throat> you can tell when things are gonna come off when they are. Just have to practice. I wouldn't suggest practicing on a longhorn cow. I'd do a deer or smaller animal first. <clears throat>
At this point, the skull has got 95% of the meat off of it. Like I said, another half hour, 45 minutes in the water, and the rest of that will clean up just fine, and it'll be ready to bleach. Okay, we just finished what should be the final boil on this skull. Right now, we're going to use a knife and hot water. And we're going to pick the final parts, the final remnants of any gristle or meat that's left on this skull. We're going to go over it really good. Make sure that there's no parts left. So when the customer gets this skull and it's finished, he has nothing to complain about. Looks like it's all going to clean up really good at this point. Sometimes you have to use a wire to go down in these little pockets on the sides of the face. Poke, poke anything else that's in there. Usually it works its way out into the back or you can come from the back towards the front. Sometimes you can grab it with forceps and pull it out. Just go, go over all the seams. Yep, that was the final boil. It's cleaning up really good right now. Total boiling time in this skull was probably right at eight and a half hours from the time we put it in the water the first time to the time we took it out the last time. We had a total of eight, about eight and a half hours in total boiling time. Now that's actually a long boil. But this was, like as I stated earlier, a 10 year old bull, which is going to be a hard boil. There's what a clean skull looks like. It's all clean, it's all ready to go to the bleach. Right now we'll move it to the area where we bleach them. To bleach this skull we're going to use a cream developer, a 40 volume cream developer, and basic white bleach, clear all basic white bleach. It takes six level scoops of the bleach to five ounces of the basic of the developer. I probably only going to use four and four right now. I don't think I'll need a full six to do this skull. It might. Yeah, let's. Yeah, I better mix a little more. So I use the six scoops and the five ounces of developer. Mixes up into a pretty nice paste. Sometimes I actually I give a little more of the cream the, the cream formula than I do the scoops of the bleach because the bleach is pretty expensive. As I get this mixed up, this hole in the head, it's a little down in there. I'm going to poke some down in there to bleach that better. Make sure you have rubber gloves on and they're protecting because this stuff is very hard on the hands. It will burn instantly. Just rub a nice coat of that over. I like to do this step when the skull is still warm. From the boiling process, I believe the bleach takes better. Does a better job. I'll leave this bleach on overnight. Tomorrow morning, I'll take the skull back to the sink. I'll rinse it off good with hot water, get all the bleach off of it. And then I'll use a Dawn, just a Dawn dishwashing liquid, or you can use the shampoo cream developer if you want. I find that Dawn works just as good for neutralizing it. 
but you want to make sure you wash all that bleach off with Dawn. Do a thorough job with the Dawn dishwashing liquid. I don't have to do these horn pieces because the horn caps are going to cover so the white, it doesn't have to be perfectly white under there. You just want to make sure any exposed part of this gall is completely covered. And that bleach will do its job. It'll just set here. I've got my own bleaching area. I leave it set until tomorrow morning in this spot. As I said, if you've gotten any bleach on your skin at this time, make sure you wash it off with soap and water instantly. That ends the process of boiling and bleaching a longhorn steer skull. As we finish the skull and put the horns back on, we'll 